Good morning from Adelaide. How are we all this morning? Just wait for a couple of people to tune in and we'll make a start. Oh, somebody's watching. That's the start. Now I'm just going to bring this up on screen in front of me. So bear with me a second. Here we go. And I'm going to turn the volume down on that. Comments on. Good morning, Alison. Good morning, Rowie. Oh, you're back, sweetheart. How are you this morning? Beautiful. Jessica's key word for yesterday, beautiful. <laughs> Did anybody watch Jess's live Facebook yesterday? She has not ever done a live Facebook before. And... Um, and and mummy pushed her to do it, which was, which was well, I didn't really push her, but you know she didn't need that much of a push. Um, and uh, so I thought, all right, I'll get her to to go around the studio and do a little tour of fav her favourite papers and things like that, because all of the paper pads have been on special. And I'm listening to her and cacking myself laughing because all she's saying is, oh, that's beautiful, it's beautiful. Bless her cotton socks. So she did a good job. And then last night when she did the um, the boom gel yesterday afternoon. So that was um, that was really good as well. So I will show you. I'll put some photos up a little bit later on this morning on, on how they've dried up because they're looking pretty spectacular this morning. So, um, so what I'm going to do today is part of the Great Australian Craft Show weekend. I'm going to just create a couple of quick, I say quick, but I don't know how long they're going to go for, um, but I, a couple of cards using the Lindy's Gang Magicals and some more vintage -y sort of style instead of nice and bright. The, the last couple of days I've done some really bright projects, um, which have been really gorgeous. And this morning I thought, oh, I'll just tone it down a bit for a Sunday morning and do something a little bit softer and a little bit more vintage style using the Lindy's Gang shakers in the six new colours that they released, or sorry, five new colours that they released uh, last year and and create something from those that is, is pretty. So now if you have missed any of my live Facebooks over the last couple of days, you can jump back onto YouTube and I'm going to, I've been uploading them there. So if you do a search for Natalie May Scrapbook Ideas um, on YouTube, you will find it there. And uh, you'll find all of those um, tutorials that I've been doing online and a few other little bonus bits and pieces as well. So, um, so good morning to those just tuning in. Good morning, Fiona. How are you? Good. I can see her. No doubt she's laying in bed watching this morning like a lot of you are. So today up on Lindy's Gang and also on my blog, which that's the address there, um, you will find this project that I created for Lindy's Gang using these, uh, creating like lovely vintage style backgrounds, um, colouring chipboard, doing some bits and pieces with stenciling here as well. Oh, good morning, Karen. How are you? Yes, you are back. Um, clearly you've had a very busy weekend watching live Facebooks. Um, so what I'm going to do is I want to show you how to create something similar to this sort of look, which makes a gorgeous card front, um, gorgeous card for a friend, something that's not nice and bright, but something a bit more toned down. Um, so I do have some close up photos on my blog where you can get some more information on this. Oh, you're driving home. Oh, bugger. We never got that glass of gin together. Anyway, um, okay, sidetracked. So that's what I'm going to show you how to do this morning, creating a background similar to this. Um, I have pre-prepared a couple of pieces of card and I'm just going to come up to the camera to show you. Oops, and hit the table. Whoops, sorry. Um, but I don't know if you can tell, I have used a little bit of white gesso and a stencil to stencil over the top of some of that paper. 
So the stencil that I used this morning was this lovely damask one from Paper Rose. Um, and it is a, it's just, a, it's a gorgeous design and it's really very versatile. So you can use it for um, masculine and feminine projects and really, really pretty design. So these retail for $10, 15% off that at the moment. So a bit of a bargain there. So I've just got plain cardstock. This is what I make cards out of and I've cut cut it in half down to six by four. And I'm going to add a little bit of color onto these this morning. The colors that I'm going to use are the, uh, the, the antique colors and I'm going to do a couple of things with, I'm gonna get my heat gun handy as well. Get that ready to go. Um, but I'm going to do some sprinkling and spritzing of the magical powders. So the Lindy's Magical Shakers are a pigment dye-based powder. So they are a... The pigment means they're full of colour. The dye means that they are permanent and they're going to stay in your paper. And the powder means that you need to activate them to get the magic to happen. So you need to... Be aware that if you don't activate it, it's just going to end up being a dry powder. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to work across both of these just to show you how to um, how to use them. The shakers have got a, a scoopy side that looks like that, big hole. And then they have got the shaker side. The shaker side is what we're going to be using today. So what I'm going to do is just tap some onto my card. And again, I've got my puppy training pad in the background here. So that's gonna soak up any extra water. Um, for those of you playing along at home, if you've got comments that are coming up covering the bottom of your screen and you can't see what I'm doing, if you just slide those across, they will disappear. Um, but when I, when I go back and when I upload it to YouTube, you won't see any of the comments. So yes, you'll be able to just slide those comments across the screen if they are in the way. Um, so I'm going to add a few different colors here. So I've just added antique gold and now I'm adding antique bronze. And that will do me for the moment. And then I've got some water spray here and I'm going to activate that powder. I'm coming in quite close because I want the color to be nice and intense. Yeah, just like that. So you can see that this um, antique bronze is a blue based bronze and I'm getting these blue pigments come out. So that is exactly the sort of look I'm after. Now I'm going to add antique copper, which is very much like a rose gold. So I'm just gonna whack a bit of that on there as well and activate that powder. So you can see the stenciling in the background is starting to come through. Um, one thing I should have done before I started is to spray the back of my paper with water and that's gonna stop it curling. So I'm just gonna do that now. There we go. So I wanna add this some more, some more of the antique bronze to vintage it up a little bit more. And I'm just gonna get in and commit to that. Activate that powder again. So the Lindy's Shakers, and I really should have put an apron on. Um, the Lindy's Shakers are retail for only $8 each, but they're 15% off this weekend. So that comes down to about $6.80. But they should last the average crafter about two years. They will last you a really, really long time. So just by building up this color, I can move it around with my paintbrush as well. So I've just got a wet paintbrush here in front of me and I'm just going to grab it and spread a little bit of that pigment around just to intensify some of this color. And you can see that it is coming up looking really, really pretty. So come on on this side. spreading it around with my wet brush. And I've got a couple of gaps here, so I'm gonna fill those with gold in a moment. 
But before I do that, I'm going to need to heat set some of it. Just to take a little bit of this water off it. And have a swig of coffee while I'm waiting. So the cards that I created that are on the photos on my blog, these are using uh, the Lindy's Gang squirts. And you can see that I used like one of the blue tones with that one. So there's a couple of, like Lindy's do a good range of products and the products that they do, they do really, really well. They haven't branched into a million other things. They've just really aced what they have and they're building on that collection. Lindy's have also been around since 1996. They are not a new company to the market. They've been around since I was a toddler. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> not, not so much. All right, so I'm just drying that off a little, just to take some of that wetness out of it. And I was applying a lot of water this morning, so and I'm not doing it straight down onto my puppy training pad because that'll burst into flames splendidly. Nobody needs to see that this morning. So the shimmer that's sitting on top is coming up really well because all of the Lindy's Magicals have got, Magical Shakers have got a shimmer in them. The shimmer sits beautifully on top of the paper. So the mica sits on top and the shakers have a binder in them that will bind it to the paper, okay? So that beautiful color is looking pretty special this morning. All right. I have no time to watch that dry. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is I just want to build up a little bit more and give it a little bit more intensity. And I might actually do that. I was going to do it with gold, but I think I'm going to jump in and do it with black. Like, how bad can that go? So, oh, and I need my nails done. There we go. Oh, that's better. So, adding black means I need to go with the whole less is best option, all right? So I'm going to sprinkle a small amount of black down here in my gap and a little up here for balance. Same thing again, I want to pop some here and pop a little bit over here and a bit more down here for balance. So this is Black Forest Black. This is one of my favourite colours out of the collection. Yeah, look at that. So while that is wet, I need to use my brush and move that around so that it's not just big chunks of black on my page. You'll notice I didn't do it smack bang in the middle either. That's because it would have ended up being just a black blob in the middle of the page. So just by popping it on the edges creates a little bit of a frame. So I know that I'm gonna put a couple of embellishments on. So I'm pretty happy with that. And I'll do the same thing here. Pushing it around, pushing the color to the edges and getting that color on there. Um, the water, the amount of water is going to uh, make a difference as to how much brush strokes or how brush strokes show up. I don't want brush strokes with this project. So the whole idea here is to use a wet brush to move it around. So I'm quickly gonna dry this off again because I've got lots of color or lots of water on it, but you can see how beautiful that black has intensified kept that vintage style look going and looks really pretty. But I still have to activate that powder every single time that I use it, so. All right. And this is the one morning that I should have cracked out the, the big boy heat gun to, to dry that off, but that's all right. We'll make the magic happen here. So I don't know if you can see in the camera any of that shimmer that's sitting on top there. It's looking pretty nice. So we need to remember, no matter what, when you're creating backgrounds like this, you're just creating something for your base, like for your card to 
to showcase your card. So this is just the background. If it's not perfect, it doesn't matter. It's not going to be the hero. The hero is going to be what we put on next. So if this was a scrapbook page, for example, the this is just the background. The hero would definitely be the photograph. The if I was doing this in an art journal page, which can it can be done in an art journal as well, the um, the hero will be the focal point. It'll be whatever we put on top of this next. So the idea being, we are just working on a background, not going to be the centerpiece of our project. So that is dry enough for me. So those two little backgrounds came up looking pretty special. And let's take the power cord away from the water. <laughs> Whoops. Oh, okay. Um, okay, so the colours that I used were antique bronze, black forest black, antique gold, and aged copper. So four colours, not a whole lot of effort involved. Um, I hope I didn't make that look hard because I'm telling you, it certainly wasn't. Um, so I'm just going to pop those aside what do I want to do next I would like to I've got some embellishments here in front of me I've got a few things that I've pulled off the shelf um, and pulled out of my stash uh, I've got some of the Tim Holtz collage paper so I might pop some of that on so that's really pretty I know I've got a couple of different styles in stock at the moment um, Louise is the typeset one still on the shelf smack bang in front of you you know those long yep, those things not down down there in front so there's no to your left oh, yeah. so that's the document one we've still got plenty of those in stock and then the one was there one next to it or did we yeah, sell no, out of it not sold, no, sold out so beautiful so this is the document one here and it's got these really simple neutral patterns on them so i might use that um, i'm going to incorporate some of the tim holtz film strips so these are these have been around for a really really long time um, back when I was working in the scrapbooking shop on Goodwood Road here in Adelaide, these were there then, and I've got some more back in stock, if I can get it out of the tube. Here we go. And they are just this gorgeous little, oh my God, mini film strip. Here we go. This mini film strip. So I'm going to pop some of that on as well. No, sorry, Karen, the typeset sold out yesterday. It's the quick or the dead around here at the moment, babe. Um, I've also got some of these rulers, so that's what the um, film strip looks like. You get a, a roll of 108 inches, oh, 2.4 meters, that's pretty good. And how much is it? I've got no idea because I haven't put any prices on it. Um, and these are the, the rulers, so this is a pack of five rulers and they're out on clearance for $9. So I'm going to use some of these. And the rulers are great because you can just snap them in half and they're wood and they're porous, so I will use those. Uh, I've, got a, I've got some vintage elements here from the Tim Holtz layers pack. These are great. There's 33, 35 pieces in here and they make really cool little embellishments. So I'm going to use those. But before I do that, I've got some chipboard. And I want to use some chipboard to heat emboss the... Put some heat embossing on it. And I want to use these two elements here. Um... Oh, no, I might use this guy. So, Lindy's also you do, also do uh, an embossing powder. Embossing powder is, for those of you who don't know what embossing powder is, it is a powder of little crystals that you apply and then melt. Um, I can't get that out. So, the ones that I'm using here, these are the 13 Arts ones yes 13 arts chipboards and they are four dollars fifty for a pack and they make great little embellishments and i've just totally broken that one so they are on like a white core board here and i'm going to heat emboss them so the lindy's magical sorry the lindy's embossing powders are i'm going to use the chunky ones and show you how to use those because they're new they haven't been out very long and they come out in a huge range of colors so don't scream aqu aquamarine. So you can see that that's got all of these chunky little colours in them. Silence is golden. 
which I think that's the one that I picked out this morning. And that's got like a gold glitter through it. Then they've got a verdigris. They've got granite, which looks exactly like a granite bench top. Um, there's some chrome. They've got a, a rusty one, which looks really brilliant. And the quartz one, which is beautiful as well. So they're also discounted this weekend. Um, how do we use them? What I need to do is I need to put some sort of medium down on these so that the powder sticks to it. Um, I forgot to get my embossing ink out, but I have got some gel medium. So that's going to work just fine for the time being. And I'm going to just use my finger to put the gel medium on that and it's going to work like a glue. Pop that aside. Flick out those extra bits. And then I'm just using my the best tool that I have, which is my finger. I was going to make a bad joke then about my husband, but I <laughs> yeah, But that's inappropriate for a Sunday morning. Um, right, so I've given that a nice little coat. And now I'm going to tip the embossing powder straight onto it. All right. So I'm going to give it a good shake there to mix it all up. I don't know if on camera you can see all of that goodness that sits inside it. Yeah, you can. Okay. So now I'm just going to sprinkle that on quite generously. I'll stuff it. There we go. Um, use my tweezers. So I've got to make sure that's completely covered. So heat embossing is really, really easy to do and it's been around for a really, really long time. So you can see there that I've covered it-ish. And now I'm just gonna put this one off to the side and I'm gonna use my tweezers to hold it because I'm really good at burning my fingers doing this. And you can see the bits that I forgot to cover with um, gel medium, but I'm gonna use my heat gun from underneath to help dry that off. If I hit it on the top with the heat gun, it's going to blow a lot of the crystals off. So I want to melt it and secure it from underneath. Right, that's started. And now I can get in there and go melt and you just going to hit it with the heat gun until it melts if you don't have a heat gun can you use a toaster yes a little messy my sister is behind me laughing she thinks that that's funny but people do it um can you use a hair dryer no you can't hair dryers don't emit enough heat and they don't and they'll just blow everything off it and we don't want that to happen It takes a moment or so for them to melt because this is quite chunky. And I'm just going to dip it back in to the embossing powder again just to show you that you can then add more while it's hot. Just chat amongst yourself. Alright, that one's looking pretty good and stuck to my tweezers. Where's the camera? There we go. So you can see, you should be able to see that melting as I hit it with the heat gun. Anyway, all right. So um, I'm going to do, while this is just cooking, melting, um, I'll tell you a couple of other things that have been going on here with Natalie May scrapbooking. Uh, I... I'm still working here at home, but instead of doing classes in the studio, due to social physical distancing requirements, the studio doesn't allow people to, large groups of people to congregate. So instead of having classes here in the studio, I've been opening them up and doing them online for everybody to be able to join in. 
So there are currently four classes online or three classes online at the moment, I think, which are available for anybody to join in. And they're all run through Facebook and they're pretty much exactly the same as what I'm doing at the moment, uh, where I just create a project and talk you through it. And then from there, you can then go back and watch it whenever you like and join in. So I've only done that bit there just won't melt. There we go. Um, I've only done art journaling classes at this stage because they're using tools that people are most have mostly have at home. Uh, I need to try and work out a plan of doing some card classes and some scrapbooking classes. But they are available for anybody to do at any time. So they you'll find those on my website, nataliemay.com.au, under the classes heading. Okay, so I'm just going to pop all of that embossing powder straight back into the bottle. And then pop the lid on before I tip it everywhere. So what's happened is this is all melted up beautifully. And now that's coated and my lovely little leaves have. What am I going to do with them? Everything's now covered in glitter because that's fun. <laughs> um, before I do that, I want to add a little bit of frame, a bit of edging to it. So I have got some 13 Arts Splash Ink and I'm just going to give that a quick shake. So what I want to use this for is I want to put some circles on it just like I have done here and around my edges. So then it gives it a little bit of a a definition so my plastic bag is just going to work as my surface and I'm just going to swipe that's not working I'm just going to swipe on some ink like that and I've got a lid this is the lid from a, uh, a magicals packaging and I'm just going to twist it around into here and just do a couple of quick circles And they won't take too long to dry because they are a really, it's a really nice quality ink and it splashes onto your pages beautifully, hence the name Splash Ink. Now the other thing I want to do while I have the opportunity, I'm going to take the nozzle and just put a bit of a frame around the outside. I could quite easily stamp on this as well, but I haven't got any stamps out handy but you could quite easily add some background stamps to, to your um, card front. That'll do. And then this one as well. Just swiping it on here to get a rough, grungy edge on it. How am I going for time? Beautiful, okay. And I, I like this thickness that comes up here because then it creates more of a, um, a rough sort of grungy look. Pop that aside before I wear it. Pop that over here before that goes bad. And a baby wipe. So stamps and stencils are all 15% off this weekend as, is, as are... All the Dina Wakely products, so the gel medium that I just used, that's also 15% um, off. And what else? Magicals, all the Lindy's products are all 15% off as well. So now rather than heat set this again, which you guys just don't need to see me use a heat gun anymore, I'm just going to leave it wet. So I've got a little bit, bit of a background going on and now it's just all of the embellishments. So the embellishments um, and laying those out is just a case of grabbing a few of these little ephemera pieces uh, and working out what I want to use. Um, I'm going to grab these two little ruler pieces and I'm going to pop one there and one there. They will snap off or you can use your scissors to cut those off. Um, good morning, Lucy. Nice of you to join us. <laughs> um, 
Now, I want to add a little bit of colour to this. So to do that, I'm going to grab some antique gold Lindy's. Give it a quick little shake up. Pop it into my, my paint palette here in front of me. And I'm going to use my paintbrush to add a little water and make a little slurry of what almost looks like a watercolour paint. The only thing that makes it a watercolour paint though is the fact that I've used water. But you have to remember with Lindy's, it is a pigment dye. So it is going to dye the paper. The other one I'm gonna use is this one here. It's a bit longer, but she'll be right. Um, and I'm just gonna brush that off as well. All right, and that one we'll just place there's good. Uh, the film strip, I had that. Where did I put that? Um, I might come back to that. What have I got here? So these are some of the bits out of the ephemera pack. And I might use this guy here. Little ticket. Needs a bit of darkness on the edges. How am I gonna do that? I haven't got an ink pad handy. Um, so, yes I have. Here's an archival black ink and a blending sponge. So I'm just gonna pop a little shadowing on the edge here just to dirty it up and grunge it up a bit. And instead of using double-sided tape and glue for this project, I'm going to use my stapler and staple it on because that's quick and easy. So the Tim Holtz Tiny Attacher, the perfect tool for putting all of these little elements on. Um, I, I do love that they are tiny little staples so they don't look like big office staples. Um, I do have a couple of, I did have a couple of staplers in stock, but I know that I have the staples. So if you have one at home already and need some staples, I do have them online. Um, okay, let me just staple that baby on. Radio. So good morning to everybody who have has just joined in, watching me flounder around here with a making a quick little tag that tag card front using the Lindy's Magicals. I'm just adding a little bit of a little bit of embellishing this morning. So I've got the Tim Holtz tissue paper, and I'm not going to collage it down like I would normally do. I'm going to use it as a loose piece on my project. Stapler. And I'm going to staple that bit over the top and it's all about adding some textural elements. So that's stapled onto there. I don't really want to cover up the, the butterfly on here but I'm going to scrunch up this bit of tissue paper and I'm going to cover it up a little. So while I'm just floundering around with this little guy, you will notice last night I did a post saying that the Tim Holtz new speckled egg dis distress oxide, and I also have some distress inks coming in as well, um, but I just haven't got the quantity of those. So they will be in here first thing on uh, Tuesday morning. So if you would like to order those, you can order online now, those items and they will be posted with your order in during the week. So I guess essentially it's a pre-order. Um, so they are there for you to do. Um, highly anticipated release from Tim Holtz. All right, what else have I got? Oh, the film strip, I haven't used that. Okay, how do we use the film strip? I'm just gonna cut a piece off and staple it on. Um, that one can go there. That one can go there. So the Tim Holtz film strips are also in stock. Um, I forgot about my, here we go. 
Oh, look at that. That can go there. My piece of heat embossed chipboard. And again, staple it. We're going for that rustic, grungy look. So let's commit to it. And then on this side, I've got the leaf, the leaf spray, and that we're going to run up on that side there. And again, stapler works great. Okay, put this guy on here. And I'm just tucking in that film strip a little bit in under that loose tissue paper here. And this one is going to sit, I'm going to thread it in underneath and overlap like so. And I've run out of staples, so that one's perfect. Um, <laughs> Do you want some? Um, no, I've run out of staples, so that means I just can't use staples anymore. But, you know, there we go. All right. So this is going to get stuck onto here. Um, I'm bringing out... Oh, good morning, Michelle and Tina. How's sunny Queensland this morning? Because it's, it's oh. overcast and ordinary here. Um, okay, so now I'm using the silicon tape. I used it yesterday in one of my demos. The silicon tape is a very cool to, tool for um, mixed media because it is a clear tape that is super sticky. Good morning, Vicky. How are you this morning? Um, the silicon tape is on special at the moment as well, 15% off, but it is super duper tacky. Uh, to the point, like the other red tape us crafters use with this red stuff that's a nightmare to get off, you'll notice I've left a little tail here and I use that for a uh, to, for, for helping hold it down. So you can see that it's totally clear and what I'm going to do is put it on the back of my piece of wood and you can also stretch it a little too. So a little bit goes a really long way. But these are 15% off. All adhesives in the shop are 15% off at the moment as well. So perfect time to stock up on double-sided tape, foam tape, um, the wonder tape, silicon tape, glues, tape runners, the um, awesome puzzle glue that I use from Poland. Um, it's 15% off as well. Okay, so that one's well and truly stuck down. That's going nowhere. And then I'll just put some on my other ruler here. You know, I probably could have just made one card, but I don't quite know what I chose to do too. You know, go hard or go home, right? Um, all right, so a bit more of the silicon tape on the back of this wood piece. And that's going to sit there. Alrighty, so I am on the finishing touches here. Let's get some of this stuff out of the way. Oh, look what I found. Some Tim Holtz dead people. Tim Holtz paper dolls. I have used these to within an inch of my life because they are cool, little interesting. Not everybody likes them. Not everyone knows what to do with them. And I can appreciate that. Um, I was one of those people that kind of went, really? Do I really need them? Uh, yes, yes, I do. If I can't find the right embellishment to put on a project, this is what I crack out. For some reason, I don't love their eyes. And I usually try and cover up their eyes with a sentiment sticker or a funny quote or something like that. Um, good morning, Cheryl. Hello, almost missed it, been mopping floors. Oh, honey, no one needs to mop floors, calm down. Goodness me, it's Sunday. Um, so what I'm doing here is I'm just inking the edges of them just to take away that white edge uh, using black archival ink. These are slightly glossy, so you do need to use something that is gonna stay 
or it's going like, like a black archival ink or an alcohol ink because it will rub off. Um, you can use Copic markers to color their little frocks if you'd like, um, but I like the black archival ink. Um, and I'm gonna pop these guys on here. So this would make you know a nice little anniversary card or something like that because these guys are holding hands because they love each other. Um, so I'm going to use the silicon tape to pop those on. And again, highly recommend keeping a tail uh, of the of the backing. Um, is there two different sets of dead people? Um, Vicky, Tim brings out different ones quite regularly. There are, I think, three or four sets in circulation at the moment. Uh, the set that I have on the shelf is, they have 101, what does it say on that, Lou? 101? 107 paper dolls. 107 paper dolls. That would be the other reason why you see me use them on every project, because I've got a... 107. 107 dolls. Actually, I have more than that because I reckon I've got about three packets open because, um, you know, that's what we Cause do. Because it's a big family. Because it's a big family. Uh, and they are really, really, they're just easy to use. Uh, I think that, yeah, not everybody likes them and I get that. Just He's just trying to stop his running to... Oh, <laughs> um, all right, so this one here, I'm going to be putting onto. Oh, now see, look, it's stuck to my fingers. How good is that silicon tape? <laughs> in the latest in uh, nail <laughs> nail embellishments. Okay, let's pop that aside. So let's talk about a little bit of composition here. This particular little couple of kids, they need to go onto this card because of the body language. He is taller than she is. So he's the more dominant feature and he's he needs to sit about here. If I was to put it onto this one, it just doesn't quite look right. I think that he needs to sit here. Then this one, which will be lovely for, like I said, a wedding anniversary card or something like that. This one needs to go on this side because he's the more dominant person in the uh, image and he is taller so he needs to go here sticked down good sticked down good all right so that's looking oh no okay my bet no that's the other battery okay so my battery's low but it's not there we go so the only other thing I will do when I get off camera is I need to add a sentiment um, and that is the only thing that I didn't get out to prepare um, but I'll put some close-up photos and a list of the products that I used so that you can have a bit of a look but it's not supposed to be hard the whole idea is that you create something fun this is all homemade stuff remember you're not going to be judged on MasterChef out of it 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 does not going to get you to the next round you just need to create something that makes you happy Eat it. You don't have to eat it. That's right. So don't overthink your projects. Create something that's fun. Um, if you want to see close-ups of the other projects that I have created, whoops, um, you'll find them on my blog. My blog is written down here, happydax.blogspot.com, um, and there will be a YouTube so you can watch watch it back. Uh, so. Just in finishing up, to start with, what we did is we used a modelling paste or a gesso to go through a stencil in the background. Then once that was dry, I used the Lindy's Gang Magical Shakers, which are these guys here, to sprinkle and then spritz with water to create my colour in the background. We used embossing powder from Lindy's, this is the new chunky embossing powder. And we heat embossed our 13 arts chipboard, which is here and here. Um, and that looks amazing. Um, looks, it's come up looking so good. Uh, we use the Tim Holtz stapler 
and staples to, sta to, to adhere everything. Some collage paper, some film strip, some rulers, the, uh, the dead people. Um, and we've created something that looks kind of cute, kind of effective. And in a moment when I take some photos and upload them, you'll be able to see the finished product. So thank you everybody for tuning in this morning. I will be back again at... 1.30 Adelaide time, which is 2 o'clock Australian Eastern Standard. And I'm going to use some of the new Scrap Effects tissue papers, collage papers, in an art journal. And whip up a quick Sunday afternoon art journal page. Um, and yeah, thanks for tuning in. And I look forward to speaking to you all soon. Bye.